In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. I'm glad to see so many new faces among our regular class members. Your presence here proves that you appreciate the vital importance of these classes. But perhaps many of you do not know just how this Pray the Mass movement came into being and just what we hope to accomplish through our work. These classes were begun in order to give people a more intimate knowledge and a more loving understanding of the Mass by teaching them to pray the Mass with missiles. It is all this national, if not worldwide, forces, as did the perpetual novena in honor of our sorrowful mother, which began here in our midst, and of which this Pray the Mass movement is a result. It is principally through that we hope to reach our goal. And it is possible for a spiritual movement of this type to attain such success has been proven by the perpetual novena, which began in Our Lady of Sorrows Church in Chicago in the winter of 1937. Within a few short months, this great spiritual movement had attracted worldwide attention. Seldom does a week go by without seeing a new church inaugurate this perpetual novena. Our sorrowful mother has indeed blessed our efforts to teach people to honor her. And we pray that she may bless our efforts to teach people to worship God more devoutly by intelligently praying the Mass. Our first and greatest step toward achieving this goal is to give people an exact understanding of the church's public worship. For the church officially worships God through sacrifice. Now sacrifice is to be seen in its fullest, most glorious form when solemn mass is celebrated. Therefore we feel that the detailed study of the mass which we are about to present will most effectively induce everyone to pray the Mass with missiles. The missal, of course, is the prayer book, containing the prayers actually said during the Mass, together with other valuable religious information. Now, will you all please open your missiles and turn to the Mass for Easter Sunday. Picture yourself seated in church. It is Easter Sunday. Beautiful flowers, lighted candles. The whole church is decorated for the solemn celebration of this joyful feast. Mass begins. <laughs>
flowing from the right side of the temple. Alleluia. And all to whom that water came were saved. And they shall say, Alleluia. Alleluia. This ceremony of sprinkling the holy water is an act of preparation. It is not a part of the Mass. It symbolizes the purification of the soul, which should precede the offering of the sacrifice. Just as ordinary water cleanses the body, so the power of God, exercised through this blessed water, tends to purify the souls of the faithful. The sign of the cross is made frequently by both the celebrant and the people, thus recalling not only the most holy trinity, the Father who created us, the Son who redeemed us, and the Holy Ghost who sanctified us, but also the cross on which Christ died. The large cape worn by the celebrant is called a cope. Centuries ago, the cope was a rain cloak worn by the monks in outdoor processions as a protection against the rain and cold. Its use today is continued in memory of the ancient tradition. It is a long-established principle of the church never to completely drop from her public worship any ceremony, object, or prayer which once occupied a place in that worship. Hear us, O Holy Lord, Almighty Father, Eternal God, and vouchsafe to send thy holy angel from heaven to guard, cherish, protect, visit, and defend all that dwell in this house. The large coat now gives way to the vestments regularly worn during the Mass. These vestments are typical of the clothes worn by the layman in the early Christian days. The outer vestment of the celebrant, the chasuble, recalls the seamless garment worn by Christ. These mass vestments are precious heirlooms, vivid historical witnesses to the antiquity of the mass. Good. 
the dawn of civilization, man has worshipped God through sacrifice. By the offering of precious gifts, men publicly expressed adoration and love of God, their creator. The greatest gift ever given to God by the human race was the life of his own divine son. Our blessed Lord, the night before he died, gave something that no human being on dying was ever able to give, namely himself. Do this in commemoration of me. He told his apostles on that solemn night of the Last Supper. This mass is in obedience to that injunction by which we look back to Calvary as he looked forward to it. Between God and man stands one great barrier, sin. For by sin man contracted in the worst bargain he ever made, a greater debt than he could ever pay. Only by the Son of God bringing his infinite justice to our bankruptcy could that debt ever be acquitted. of sweet-smelling incense upon burning charcoal is a sign that solemnly expresses deep sentiments of sacrifice and prayer in the hearts of men. The destruction of the incense by fire is a symbol of sacrifice. The smoke ascending heavenward is the symbol of prayer. By God's own command, the use of incense was prescribed in the sacrifices of the Jewish religion. In imitation, the pagans appropriated the incensing ceremony to honor their idols. The Christian religion, very early in its history, restored the use of incense to its proper place, the public worship of the one true God. begins the solemn plea for mercy. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy on us.
the intro eat which the celebrant began to recite with the sign of the cross is the first of several prayers that change from day to day in the mass. These are called proper prayers. To distinguish them from other prayers which are used every day and are called the ordinary of the mass. A different group of proper prayers each day establishes an ever-changing theme in each mass by which Christ in one liturgical year lives again his 33. Following the prayers of the Mass day by day through a year, we relive the life of Christ. 30 years obeying, three years teaching, three hours redeeming. Glory be to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men of good will. thee, we bless thee, we adore thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. For thou alone art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Jesus Christ, art most high with the Holy Ghost in the glory of the Father.
prayers for God's forgiveness and mercy have been completed. We now turn to God for instruction. The Lord be with you. O Ramos Adeus, we hold the NRDA, Peruni Genitum Atum. O God, who on this day, through thine only begotten Son, hast overcome death and opened unto us the gate of everlasting life. Do thou follow with thine aid the desires which thou dost put into our minds. And by thy continual help, bring the same to good effect through the same Christ, our Lord. Per omnia secula The epistle which is now being read is a portion of St. Paul's epistle to the Corinthians. Brethren, purge out the old leaven that you may be a new paste as you are unleavened. For Christ, our Pasch, is sacrificed. Therefore, let us feast, not with the old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. singing of this type is called Gregorian Chant, named after Pope Gregory the Great, who contributed greatly to its development. The words of the chant are taken directly from the Missal and are sung as an integral part of the Mass. The music itself traces its origin to the community worship of the first Christians of Rome. The early Christians as a group, praying together with the priests, recited many of these prayers aloud. Gradually, instead of reciting the prayers, the early Christians began to compose their own simple melodies, adapted to express the spiritual meaning of the words used in the Mass. Through the efforts of devout musicians, especially among the early monks, these melodies were gradually arranged in systematic form for the official public worship of the Church. The church is proud of her Gregorian chant, since it is her own musical creation. The cadence, the devout simplicity of this music, 
make it perfectly suitable for divine worship. The prayer which is now being chanted is the gradual of the Mass. The choir now sings Victime Pascale, the song extolling the triumph. Subdeacon now brings the missile to the gospel side of the altar to remind us how the word of God, first revealed to the Jews, was brought to the whole world through the gospel of Christ. To acknowledge that the whole gospel of Christ is contained in the sacrifice of the cross, the celebrant makes the sign of the cross on the book. A triple sign of the cross is made on forehead, lip. Deacon who is about to sing the gospel, which the celebrant has just read silently, kneels and asks the blessing of God, that this proclamation of the word of God to the world will be fruitful. As a gesture of reverence, the deacon kisses the hand of the celebrant. All these external signs of special honor, the procession, the lighted candles, the incensing and the people rising to their feet are tributes to the sacred character of the gospel. For in the gospel, God speaks directly to us through the words and works of Christ. Dominus Bovis Santi Evangelii secundo Marco. Gloria a ti, Dominus. 
continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. At that time, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought sweet spices that coming they might anoint Jesus. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came to the sepulcher, the sun being now risen. And they said one to another, Who shall roll us back the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And looking, they saw the stone roll back, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed with a white robe, and they were astonished, who saith to them, Be not frightened. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There you shall see him, as he told you. celebrant as Christ's personal representative receives the tribute of incense. He is about to intone the credo, a solemn profession of faith.
and was made flesh by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man. The actual sacrifice is about to begin. From this point forward, there are only two dominant themes in the action of the Mass. Giving to God and receiving from God. The gifts we give, ourselves and the crucified Christ. The gifts we receive, the body and blood of Christ. The deacon spreads the upon which will rest the gifts of bread and wine, which later will be transformed into the body and blood of Christ. The altar is now fully prepared for the offertory of the Mass, which will begin after the choir has completed the creed.
offertory of the Mass begins as the celebrant summons the congregation to join with him in offering the sacrifice to God. Dominus Vobiscum. By giving bread, which is the very marrow of the earth, and by giving wine, which is its very blood, we are giving the two substances which have most traditionally nourished man, and thereby we are equivalently giving ourselves. and eternal God, this spotless host, which I, thy unworthy servant, offer unto thee, my living and true God, for mine own countless sins, offenses, and negligences, and for all here present. unto thee, O Lord, the chalice of salvation. At one time, the members of the congregation brought gifts, such as bread and wine, to be offered at the Mass. Today, the offertory collection takes the place of the offer of these gifts of bread and wine. After handling the gifts of bread and wine, the celebrant washes his feet. Today, this external cleansing is a symbol of the internal purity which priest and congregation should possess as they offer Mass together.
celebrant intones the preface, a solemn, beautiful song, calling upon the angels and archangels, thrones and dominations, and all the heavenly hosts, to sing a hymn of glory to the triune God, Sanctus, Sanctus. Ascanos cum imolatus est Christus. Ipse enim averus est anius, qui abstulit peccatam mundi. We mar Nostram amoriendo deis fluxi, et vitam resurgendo. We have entered the most important part of the Mass, the canon. The ancient, unchanging sequence of prayers, which contains the heart of the Mass, the consecration. Through the words and action of the canon, the celebrant accomplishes the great work of the Mass, bringing Christ himself down on our altar, that we may offer him to God. Our gifts, bread and wine, representing ourselves, are transformed into the body and blood of Christ. Then the celebrant offers Christ and ourselves in union with Christ to God. The priest does not consecrate the bread and wine together, but separately, as our Lord did at the Last Supper, and as he commanded his church to do. By this separate consecration of the bread and wine, we mystically represent the manner in which Christ died on the cross of Calvary, namely by the separation of his body and his blood. The sentiment of the faithful at the moment of consecration should be, Dear Lord, I believe that thou art really and truly present on the altar under the appearance of bread and wine. But as sacrificed with thee, I say, This is my blood. Take it as thy own. I care not if the species or appearances of my life remain. 
my duties, or my health, or my wealth. These are but the accidents. But my substance, my body, my soul, my intellect, my will, all that makes me thine. Take, consecrate, transubstantiate, so that the Heavenly Father looking down upon thee may say to me as to thee, Thou art my beloved Son. In thee am I well. The action of the cannon is stopped for a special prayer of remembrance of all brothers in Christ. The celebrant begs God for mercy upon the souls in purgatory, our departed brethren. Then follows a remembrance for us sinners, the living brethren, that we may one day be joined with the saints in heaven, our triumphant. The cannon of the Mass is solemnly closed with a joyful cry of praise and adoration. The climax of this exaltation is the elevation of the sacred host. Eramnia secula secula. Salutaribus moniti et divina institutione formati. Now a new movement in the Mass begins. The act of giving to God is complete. We now receive from God. As a prelude to receiving the greatest gift of all, Holy Communion, the celebrant sings the Lord's Prayer. Adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicud in cielo et in terra. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Reverently, the celebrant kisses the gold pattern upon which the sacred host is about to rest. Just as Christ himself prepared for the First Holy Communion at the Last Supper by breaking the bread with his apostles, so the celebrant now breaks the sacred host. Semper vobiscum, 
takest away the sins of the world. For now. The prayer for peace. Recalling the promise of Christ, the celebrant asked God to give peace and unity to his church on earth. The kiss of peace, symbol of fraternal love which would exist between all Christians. follows the consecration. For throughout the universe, the sacrament follows the sacrifice. Before the food we eat can become the sacrament which nourishes us, it must first be sacrificed. That is, plucked up from its roots, submitted to the knife and the purging fire. By receiving Holy Communion after the sacrifice of the Mass, do we realize in the truest sense of the word that we live by what we slay. For Christ on the cross is the victim slain by our sins. Through his merciful power, we live by his death. Having consumed the sacred host, the precious blood. Should any particles have fallen, they are gathered up and placed in the chalice. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul to life everlasting. Amen. In this small chamber called the tabernacle is housed Emmanuel, God with us, under the appearance of small white posts, as he was hidden and housed under swaddling bands and human flesh in the crib of Bethlehem. and subdeacon chant the confitior, the confession of sin. The celebrant implores God to forgive the sins of the people and 
blesses the congregation as a symbol of this forgiveness. Domine, non sum dignus. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof. Say but the word, and my soul shall be healed. As Christ gave his own body and blood to his apostles at the Last Supper, he now gives himself to his people through the hands of the priest. There is one law running through all nature. To live, we must eat. As the plants and the animals might say to man, had they articulate speech, unless you eat me, you shall not have life in you. So too now, Christ, the King of the universe, says to man, unless you eat me, you shall not have life in you. The law of transformation thus holds sway throughout nature as through grace. The higher is transformed into the lower. Plants into animals, animals into man, and man into Christ, by which he becomes a Christian. Holy Communion, the celebrant and the people have consumed the divine victim offered to God in the sacrifice. The remaining prayers of the Mass express sentiments of praise and thanksgiving to God for the gift of his own son to us. At this point of the Mass, wine is used only to purify the chalice, remove from it the last traces of the sacred host and precious blood. May thy body, O Lord, which I have received, and thy blood, which I have drunk, cleave to my inmost parts, and grant that no stain of sin may remain in me, whom these pure and holy sacraments have refrained. The torch bearers have put away their lighted candles. Christ, the light of the world, has been sacrificed.
celebrant returns to the central theme of the Mass, the joyful resurrection of Christ. O Lord, the spirit of thy love, that by thy loving kindness thou mayest make of one mind those whom thou hast fed these paschal sacraments through Christ our Lord. Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus vobisco. Et cum spiritu tu. Ite me tole. The sacrifice has been sent to God. A silent prayer to the Holy Trinity asking for acceptance of this sacrifice. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. final act of faith in the divinity of Christ, a prayer of thanksgiving for the spiritual benefits given to us through Christ's death and resurrection. 